welcome to our weekly education around here at Seclair, where every week uh, we at Seclair, which is an integrative holistic psychiatric facility, attempt to put some practical applications, some uses in your life that help you to get along in the world and perhaps to make you have a life worth living. Our philosophy here is to assist people in living life out loud. What would living life out loud mean to you, Derek? Living out living life out loud to me was just being able to be who I am and express that without any judgment from other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and again, I am Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, and my two colleagues are joining me today for uh, the last time on a podcast. And on my right would be... Emily Woodall. I'm a physician assistant student with the University of Mount Union. And on my left would be... My name is Derek Holman. I'm a physician assistant student from Chatham University. Great, great. So what we're going to do today is, here at Seclair, what we do is we treat individuals and we do not treat diagnoses. And so, Derek, what could you tell me about a whole the holistic approach that we use here at Seclair? The holistic approach at Seclair is our main a point in stand in treating people is that we treat people and not their diagnosis. Right. So tell me the type of things that, that we look at in an individual. Uh, if an individual comes in, say, for anxiety or for depression or for relationship issues, what do we look at? What do, well, what do we look at for that person? Well, we try to look at the whole picture um, about their personal life, what they're going through, any stressors at work, their important relationships. And more importantly, how they're feeling and what they feel like they want to improve on and what they feel like they can work on. Absolutely. And quite often to fill in the circle, we'll ask them about their sleeping patterns. We'll ask them about interpersonal relationships, sociability. We'll ask them about their overall health. We'll ask them about their nutrition. Uh, we'll ask them how, how, what about their dreams. And we'll ask them about spirituality. To, to fill out to fill out the whole chart because it takes it takes all the puzzle pieces to make the puzzle does it not yep you bet you and quite often if we're looking at just a section of the puzzle pieces we're, we're, we're missing we're missing we won't have a complete complete picture of that individual so here at the Seclara primary uh, modality that we use is dialectical behavioral therapy and dialectical could you talk a little bit about dialectical behavioral therapy and what uh, you found out about it Derek absolutely it's an approach to a patient that involves individual therapy group fer therapy um, meeting with the counselor and possible some phone coaching but the goal was originally to change behaviors such as self-harm and since then has gradually progressed to helping with uh, suicidal ideations and substance abuse. But it was originally created to help with borderline personality disorder. Sure. And uh, Emily, uh, Dr. Marsha Linehan from the University of Washington uh, developed a dialectical behavioral therapy primarily first to deal with her own borderline personality issues, which she, which she brought out. Years later, after uh, she's a marvelous woman, has certainly helped very many people. So one of the one of the things that uh, dialectical behavioral therapy is particularly effective at and was developed for was personality disorders. So what uh, what would be the uh, long-winded definition of uh, psychiatric personality disorders? So the long-winded definition is deeply ingrained, inflexible patterns of behavior relating to others that are maladaptive and cause significant impairment in social or occupational functions. Absolutely. So in Earth people language, what would that be, Derek? Um, it is their, are their, the way that they have constantly developed how to live their lives that is deeply rooted. Absolutely, and usually they, they say that these uh, type of personality disorders are intractable and they're ingrained and they're, and they're challenging to deal with, okay? They're not only challenging to deal with, they're, they're very challenging for the individual to live with, okay? And also for others to live with them. It can be a great deal of distress, great deal of animosity in interpersonal relationships, great deal. In borderline personality, people, one of the characteristics uh, is their, their instability, emotional dysregulation. So what dialectical behavioral therapy uh, attempts to do is deal with that dysregulation. And when anything gets out of regulation, when anything gets out of uh, order, it can, it can be a disease, like cancer, like heart disease, like anything else, like diabetes. So and when our emotions get out of order and our thinking, 
becomes disordered, then that also be, can become also a disease. Okay. So, uh, could you tell me a little bit about what the what the what the dialectical behavior therapy involves? Absolutely. So, there's four main modules that dialectical uh, behavioral mm -hmm. therapy does, uh, and the whole approach is to work on skills to help with their disorders. Uh, the first one is mindfulness. The second is distress intolerance. The third is emotional regulation, and the fourth is interpersonal effectiveness. Sure. So when we're talking about personality disorders, Emily, what, the, what, what type of personality disorders are listed? So there's three uh, clusters of personality disorders. Cluster A is the quote-unquote MAD um, disorders. That includes the schizoid, schizotypal, and paranoid. Usually um, outsiders see these patients as either weird or kind of peculiar Usually they're associated with psychotic disorders. Mm -hmm. Cluster B is considered the bad. Um, this includes antisocial, borderline, histrionic, and narcissistic. Um, outsiders kind of view these patients as emotional or inconsistent. Mm -hmm. and usually these are associated with mood disorders. Um, and cluster C would be the sad. Um, and this includes avoided, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Usually outsiders see these patients as fearful and anxious, and these disorders are usually associated with anxiety as well. Sure, and when we talk about intractable and when we talk about ingrained, these type of personality disorders are usually in place by the time they're a teenager, okay? And quite often that comes from the environment that they grew up in, particularly borderline personality individuals uh, grow up in uh, more intense, non-validating environments. So what they do is they try to uh, they try to fix that type of behavior when when they're adults through through these acting out, uh, which is why uh, there's so much involved in childhood. But wouldn't good, have you ever heard of a person saying, "Well, I married someone like my dad. I married someone like my mother." Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. And that that happens. That happens frequently. So what happens is is the the person when they were growing up had no control over the situation that they were living. Uh, so, what, so how many women or men end up marrying alcoholic individuals, people, the personality disordered individuals, as when they were young and they were growing up, they had little or no control and they felt helpless and powerless mm -hmm. in those situations. So when they when they mature and when they grow up, uh, amazingly enough, what they do, maybe unconsciously, is associate themselves with those type of individuals to try to change and fix that situation so they regain some of that power. They never had. Kind of a different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So getting back to uh, the mindfulness. So, so tell us a little bit. Of, this is a mindfulness-based practice. So tell me a little bit about what you found out, what you've learned about mindfulness here. So mindfulness is paying attention on purpose. Um, and what I like is when they say, if your life were a movie, you could pause and take a step back and look, how would you react? Or is there anything you would do differently or you would change? So mindfulness is trying to put yourself in the other person that's viewing and see what they're seeing. Absolutely. So, so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take that phenomenological view and see what that person's seeing, what, what, what's seeing from another point of view. Have you ever thought of writing a non-judgmental view of your life, Derek? <laughs> um, on it, I hadn't before I came here, and I've learned how to, like you guys said, take a step back and view what's happening in the present versus what's going to happen in the, or from the past or what's happening in the future. Sure. And quite often, as anybody who's listened to this podcast before or watched it, quite often we refer to people as time travelers, do we not? Uh, frequent flyer miles to the past and the future with brief, brief layovers in the present. Okay? So when we're talking about dialectical behavioral therapy and we're talking about uh, learning how to change the behavioral, emotional, cognitive, and interpersonal patterns that are ingrained, and set. We have the hard drives up here. We have the uh, the owner's manual. It's pretty well set. However, what we try to do is through additional repeated type of behaviors uh, is to try to gradually massage and insert and delete some things in the operating manual. And that's uncomfortable. Yes. And it's frustrating, isn't it? You bet. Learning something new is frustrating, right? Yeah. So the idea here is is to use that mindfulness aspect, step back, and realize that that discomfort is part of the healing process. And that's when most people don't want to do it. We're, we've often talked about buying the ticket, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard me say that. I have. Yes. So 
we'll say this again and what we have what we do people is obviously we can lead a horse to water we can all make them drink however we can make them thirsty okay keep keeping people engaged in treatment ask them what their life what, what would you like your life to be if you woke up tomorrow morning and everything was the way exactly the way you would want it to be Derek mm -hmm. what what would be the difference people would be the additions what would be the subtractions so then then that's hopefully something to work on, right? So say say a little bit about what the groups that the groups that you've attended and some of the skills that you observed. Um, well, I think one of the ones that helped me the most was each week here at Saint Clair they focused on one skill because it's thought that in DBT training that you should focus on one skill versus focusing on all at one time and. When we did mindfulness, uh, one of the counselors brought in a list of it was over 200 different activities that you could do to help be able to relax yourself, relieve your stress, and allow yourself to be mindful. And it was amazing in the room how many people had checked so many of those options but just hadn't given themselves the time to be able to incorporate them into their lives. Sure. And Emily, your observations of the school groups you've been involved with? So one of my favorite skill groups was when we were working on interpersonal effectiveness and we had a list um, and it was basically two opposites like wet, dry, right, wrong. And I like that instead of using or or but, it's and. So things can be wet and dry and it was more of a way to kind of accept, you know, opposites in your life as well. Oh, acceptance and change can be, can be two sides of the same coin. Absolutely. And, and then Derek, getting back to dealing with uh, personality disorders, when we ask people to learn how to step back and identify and label the emotions and thoughts that they're feeling, mm -hmm. are, are all your thoughts correct? No. Are all your feelings correct? No. No. Are you your thoughts? Are you your thoughts? Yeah. If you were your thoughts, you could control them. <laughs> could you not? Yeah. So what we what we do in dialectical behavioral therapy is ask you to be the observer behind the matter. Okay. So when we're dealing with personality disorders, we ask them to step back, and we ask them to describe those feelings, thoughts, and emotions, until we until we can accept and, and label and identify something. We can't we can't deal with it. So unless we identify and label it as an elephant, we don't know what to feed it to it. <laughs> <laughs> so. The idea is that well, what elephants like to eat? Grass. And Grass and hay and then different things like that. So if we were trying to feed them something else and we, did, we weren't aware of what they were, things wouldn't go so well. They might even get sicker, mm -hmm. right, or, or not get well, or maybe leave. So the idea here is to keep people engaged in treatment uh, with the emotion regulation. And uh, thinking and emotions can become a disease. And disease are when things get out of balance. Derek, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Just like cancer, heart disease, uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, things get, things get out dysregulated. So the idea about uh, here is what we're doing is we're dealing with people and trying to change these type of patterns. And the first thing, is obviously, is the mindfulness is to be able to recognize it, which is a, which can be a difficult and scary thing when you step back and realize and that correctly identify what's going on in your life. Did you ever think to yourself, did anybody ever come up to you and say, how do you feel and you really didn't know? Yeah. Yeah, how about you? Mm -hmm. Right. Or when individuals are out on the street and they say, hey, Emily, how you doing? What do they expect you to say? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, that's the standard response, isn't it? And mm -hmm. what, what would they do, Derek, if you actually stopped and told them how you were? Uh, I think they would be taken aback. No, I think they probably would be, and I think they'd be probably determining what's their nearest exit. How about, <laughs> what, what's, what are the symptoms of a heart attack? Uh, how, how can I get out of here? So the idea here is that it's your life, and the only person that you can control is yourself. When we're upset or disturbed is because we find some person, place, thing, or situation, some event in your life unacceptable to you. And until you can accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is in this moment, there you can't be happy and there won't be any serenity. And what it boils down to, it's not so much as what can be changed in the world as what, what can be changed in me and my attitudes. And, of course, that comes from uh, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, the story called Acceptance is the Answer. And again, I thank you so much for you two joining us and being with here at Seclair during your uh, psychiatric rotation. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Emily to show how we can individuals can contact us.
So to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Sequoia Life. You can also find this and other grand rounds on youtube.com slash Seclairs and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit Seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as always, Derek, we give a free prescription. We give mm -hmm. uh, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and perhaps check out fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we... Fish without bait. bait. Fish without bait. No expectation. So your uh, assignment for this week is to be good to yourself. One small thing that you can do just for yourself. And we're going to leave you today with, if, if this song does not lift your spirits just a little bit, if it does not make you just the slightest bit happy, make you a little bit lighter on your feet, uh, you can find Seclair and please come and see us. And <laughs> until the next time, tra-la-la. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make it much better than this. <laughs> this is when life's happening. <laughs>